Hello and welcome. I'm Brian Bailey, Technical Editor for Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here today with Sigian Wingel, CEO of OSCE Technology. So formal verification is a mathematical technique to exhaustively verify designs. Designs are which are very hard to verify, designs which may take forever, and in a given schedule, they may be almost impossible or impossible to verify with simulation. And these techniques have been around for a long time, but lately in the last few years, they've become scalable and they have scaled to a point that we can actually exhaustively verify designs, uh, replace simulation on uh, different designs and blocks, move sim simulation one level higher, to system level or uh, chip level. So what has changed that makes it scalable now that wasn't there in the past? I think a lot of it has been our understanding about how the tools work and also how the designs work. And using those under that understanding, we are able to build abstraction models. These abstraction models allow us, allow the formal tools to get to a portion of the stage space which is very, very far away, which would have been unreachable before. And with the use of those techniques, we are able to scale and scale at the same rate at which the designs are growing. Uh, a single formal verification engineer can pretty much verify the design done by a single designer completely and exhaustively. So are you telling me that we don't need simulation anymore? No, we do need, simul do need simulation. We need simulation a lot. Uh, simulation can be, can complement formal verification very well. Uh, simulation can move to the higher level. Uh, formal verification can verify blocks, designer size blocks, units. Uh, simulation can verify subsystems. There's a lot of synergy between formal and simulation uh, practice and the methodology. Uh, we learn a lot from simulation in terms of planning, in terms of sign-off, in terms of the progress metrics that we measured while we're doing the project. But also, more importantly, the formal and simulation engineers, the teams together, they can work very closely together and exchange bugs, exchange constraints, uh, exchange the scenarios that they're seeing, and most importantly, coverage at the end of the project, which will be a combined metric for both the formal team and the simulation team to work together and collaborate and uh, give a joint sign-off certificate, if you will, to the design manager to say the design is completely verified. So if I've been using simulation in the past, how do I get started with formal? That's a great question because that's been one of the biggest challenges with formal, the uh, so-called steep learning curve or the long learning curve. Uh, how you get started is just by practicing and practicing more and more and more. Uh, people say that you need a PhD to start formal. We disagree with that strongly. We have one of the largest teams uh, with dedicated teams in practicing formal verification. These techniques can be learned. They're very different than the techniques you need for simulation. Uh, you can learn them by starting small, starting with small design blocks, growing, and understanding what is the complexity barriers that the formal tools have to solve, have to overcome, and working with the tools the engineers can learn enough techniques to jointly with the tools solve the problem completely. So if, if I were to start in this, what kind of problems would you advise me to start looking to, to use formal for? So there is a whole class of formal verification problems that you can look at. I think the most important thing is to first decide how much of your time you want to apply formal. You don't necessarily need an advanced degree, but if you want to apply formal to replace simulation for blocks or units, then it's very hard to do formal unless you have full-time focus on doing formal. If you have less time, you can still do be effective with formal, but maybe then you want to use automated apps, uh, apps from different vendors, uh, automatic usage of formal tools, things like log domain processing, connectivity checking, registered initialization, and so on. And if you have more time, you can do assertion-based verification. And if you have even more time, and if you have full-time available to you, maybe you can do end-to-end -end formal, which is what we as a company focus on. Now, earlier you mentioned abstraction models. Can you tell me what those are? Yeah, that is very, very specific to formal verification, and I'll give you an analogy with simulation in a moment. But at the crux of it, it's a technique which allows formal tools to shortcut the search space with design. Some states which are very, very far away uh, in your design space, it creates shortcuts to those states uh, from your research state and closer to the research state, so that the formal tools are able to explore very deep parts of the design which won't be possible to explore otherwise. It's kind of analogous to a technique in simulation where we have backdoor mechanisms in simulation models, where sometimes we initialize cache memories or FIFOs or transactions in a processor design to interesting states and start running simulation from that point onwards. So it's kind of analogous to that, but it's, it's a technique to implement these shortcuts with formal tools. Uh, it's very different in the way it's practiced in, in, in formal than in simulation, but the basic high-level concept is the same. 
Now, how would I actually combine the results of formal and simulation so I don't do the same thing twice? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the question you asked is important. And there is another important part of the question is that how do you make sure that nothing's dropped? Because you're doing something with formal, something with simulation. How do you make sure nothing's dropped in the cracks? So to answer both the question, I come back to coverage. And again, that's an area where we learn from simulation. Coverage has been a well-tried, well-understood, accepted part of methodology, design verification methodology, and used to sign off my when, my when I'm done with verification. I want to use exactly the same metrics, exactly the same methodology for formal also. The formal tools are starting to support formal coverage. And through formal coverage, they're able to tell the engineers how much of the design has been verified with formal with the checkers that you wrote, with the coverage, uh, using the coverage metrics that you have, the same coverage metrics that you have that are using in simulation. And the beauty of that is that if you verify formal, if you run verify one of the blocks with formal, verify the neighboring blocks with simulation, you can actually merge and integrate the coverage results and get a unified coverage result for the entire design. That sounds wonderful. And thank you very much for your time today, Vicky. Sure. Thanks, Brian.